Hey, what's up? It's Chris from Code the Things. It's been quite a long time since I've made a video because, well, technology's been pretty damn boring lately. And while this isn't the most exciting device here, Logitech did announce a Super Light 2. And well, I had to pick it up to see if it was worth the purchase. So let's check it out. Now, some of you may have seen my prior video where I reviewed the Logitech G Pro X Super Light. It was the original in the series. And as you can see, it is a five button design, just like the Super Light 2. Now, I upgraded at the time over the Razer Wireless Mamba, which was roughly 140 grams, comparative to the 63 grams that this offers. So that was a massive weight reduction. Now, it does have two less buttons than the Mamba, but the weight reduction and the responsiveness was just champion over that. So you can see this in every single video of mine, whether I'm at my desk or just behind me at my desk, since that point of that review, because this is my daily driver. Now the one does offer some pretty incredible stats. 63 grams without any sort of honeycombing on the base of the mouse. It's also a roughly a 70 hours battery life, which is just phenomenal. The Mamba had about five seconds of battery life and was three times the weight. So you tell me how Logitech managed to do that. Additionally, it had their best sensor at the time, which was the Hero sensor. It offers a roughly 25,000 DPI and it was a pretty awesome mouse to use with first person shooting and day to day work. So let's take a look at what differentiates the Superlight 2 from the Superlight 1. And of course, first we have to open the sucker up. As you can see, they are pretty identical when we're talking mice. It's a little more matte finish because of the lack of wear and tear. I have had this since the launch of the Superlight 1. And because of that, you can see that the skates are different colors. On the Superlight 1, I did have to replace the skates, so these are aftermarket, but they both would come with the matte gray here. You have the power on and off, which works for obviously saving when you're traveling or not using it. They both offer the same port here that can be used to store the USB dongle. Or in my case, I use the light speed mat. So I actually power it with the dongle here and it's interchangeable between the two devices. Damn, look at that. Just like drop right in, perfect. Next, the big change is the sensor. So originally the Superlight having that 25,000 DPI, the Superlight 2 has 32,000 DPI and a 2K polling rate. So this is an increased sensor. It may not be the best on the market. There may be other polling rates that are higher. There's uh, 4K and 8K polling rates, but I will tell you that with the Hero sensor, it's not going to matter. This is going to be a phenomenal device now with the additive of the 2K polling. Inside the box. Ah. Oh, there we go. Inside the box, you get your standard things of the USB dongle, which will convert A to C for you, the dongle itself. And then you get the standard USB cable, which is A to C, which you can plug in the device used for charging. You can actually use it when it's plugged in if you really want to. Uh, charges pretty fast. I can see it in there. The alternate shoe there with the extra skate on there, if you want a little extra glide, if you're a heavy hand on it, it could be useful, but you don't get this with the light speed charging, so that's a negative for me. And somewhere in here, as expected, you get, if you really choose to use the rubberized grips, which obviously add some weight to the device, but really, will it add that much? Who knows? I didn't end up actually using them on my mouse, uh, at times, it did feel a little slick, especially if you were like just eating lunch or something, uh, like so many of us do at the desk anymore. But I never found a reason to put these on and I won't find a reason to put them on now. So with that said, let's go do some product testing. Since I already have a device paired with my mat here and I'm not gonna use the USB dongle, it's pretty easy to fix that. You just open up your G Hub, which controls all of your Logitech crap, click on the PowerPlay mat, you click disconnect. It says, hey, anything you want to pair, you need to make sure it's off and then you turn it back on. And oh, I can already see the mouse is moving it is now connected to my Superlight 2. So simple, easy peasy. 
let's come back into here and see what my settings are. Now, one of the things I should mention since this prop came up while setting this mouse up for the first time is there was an upgrade to mouse button one and mouse button two on the Superlight 2. They, it is now a hybrid optical and mechanical switch. It's supposed to have higher precision, faster response time. I've been using the Superlight 2 now for a couple of days and it's been half work and half pleasure with gaming on Call of Duty and I'll be honest, it's not really any different than the Superlight 1. There are a few minor quirks around it that I feel the other mouse I may have just gotten used to uh, and I'll quick go over those. First, the button upgrade to the hybrid buttons that have optical and mechanical while they have a more pronounced sound to the clicker, so the Superlight 2 and the super light one. I find that the travel and the resistance is slightly more than the super light one and it kind of bugs me when I'm playing Call of Duty now. It just doesn't feel right. I'm sure it's something I'm gonna get used to, but it is a change if you're coming from the one. The other thing I find intriguing is I find either the weight or maybe just the stock uh, skates on the bottom are throwing my shots off a bit in Call of Duty. I'm over scanning a little bit and uh, I don't know if I'm just going to get used to the weight or if I should just do something to maybe add a little bit more to get back in that comfort zone. Lastly, when the computer wakes up, there's a bit of a quirk that when the mouse first moves, it's bound at 800 DPI instead of my 3200, so it is significantly slower. It seems to wake up, but it's almost like it's trying to read a profile of what app is open first to determine what speed it should be set at. My profile is hard-coded at 3200 only. It's set as the default. I made sure I also loaded it onto the memory of the actual mouse itself. Uh, and we'll see if a firmware update makes that start to disappear. But as of right now, it's a minor nuisance. It only happens within the first couple seconds of the computer waking up. And then after that, I'm back to good. Honestly, if you're in the market for a mouse, I'd probably pass on the Superlight 2 and go with the heavily discounted Superlight 1. You can find it for about $50 less on most websites right now, and that to me is a bargain. Especially considering that they launched the Superlight 2 without a new mouse pad, which is half of the appeal of doing the wireless charging. So why would I have the wireless charger that can't tap into the potential of the mouse? As for me, I may plug in the dongle for the time being into my PC once I can free up a USB port to try and take advantage of both wireless charging and the 2K polling, but it seems a little frivolous at this time.